In this second panel, uh, we're going to be asking leading UK buyers to share how their businesses have been adapting to market conditions, how Florida has been performing, uh, trends and patterns for 2021 Florida sales and their future plans. So a huge welcome to my panelists. So we have Kerry Gallagher, Marketing Director, Donata Travel B2B Europe. Uh, Lee Hazlitt, Vice President Leisure Sales at Virgin Atlantic, and Annabelle Cove, Head of Trade Sales and Marketing at Ticketing Specialist, do something different.com. Now, um, just a reminder for those of you that have just joined in the last few seconds, please do use the chat and Q&A function uh, to, to pop any questions or comments uh, in there, and I will put those to the panelists throughout the discussion. And um, we'll also try and leave some time for questions at the end as well. Um, so Lee, just to kick off um, really this discussion, can you just tell us when you're hoping to recommence routes uh, from your various departure airports to Miami and Orlando? Yes, of course. Well, um, hello, everyone, and welcome, and thanks for the uh, opportunity to, to talk today. Um, so uh, we have already uh, restarted our um, London-Miami service. That started on the 18th of uh, August and is currently operating three times a week. As you uh, would imagine a, a lot of that traffic at the moment is uh, cargo and in the passenger traffic that is uh, going across the pond is um, predominantly friends and family and so forth re reposition or US citizens given the obviously the borders are closed. Our Orlando flights uh, are currently cancelled up until and including the 9th of December um, and scheduled currently to to restart uh, from Manchester and Heathrow from the 10th. Um, but we are, um, as we all know, in this current uh, pandemic, we're uh, continually evaluating our network uh, and working hard uh, on both sides of the Atlantic to, to lobby uh, government uh, in the UK and US for a, a much robust, uh, much more robust passenger testing regime to hopefully lift some of those, those travel restrictions, uh, yeah. which will enable us to open up some of those markets a bit quicker. You know, Florida mm -hmm. is a it's a it's a it's a really key uh, market for us. Um, obviously, around 1.5 billion UK visitors in 2019, and and we have a lot of capacity uh, historically going into that market. So we're as keen, I think, as everybody else um, when it's safe to do so to to start opening those markets back up. Yeah, and fingers crossed. There were reports out there this week that we might hear some news on airport testing. So watch this space. Crossed indeed. Yeah. Watch TGMedia.com for, for more updates on that. Um, and Lee, just sticking with you, can you just talk us through how future bookings are looking for Florida? You know, this is an unusual year that we're looking at. You know, which months seasons are performing well? Are you seeing a kind of real change? Are you seeing any interesting patterns or trends in terms of traffic and cabin category type? Or well. Um... I think everyone that is quite commercially focused, which I know uh, buyers definitely will be, uh, historically looking at year on year or month on month, month on month numbers uh, has, has gone out the window a bit, and you've kind of got to delve down into the into the detail of the of the numbers to really understand how the markets are performing. What we are seeing um, is we are seeing that a lot of customers are deferring uh, further out. Um, so uh, we've seen obviously. Um, lots of cancellations, but a, uh, but a large number of, of rebooks. Um, and we're seeing strong demand for um, for Easter and we're seeing uh, summer further out into 2021. But then we're also seeing demand coming through. And we want to uh, look at how we capture that demand for further out into 2022. What I would say as well, from a Virgin Atlantic perspective, um, which has been well documented through uh, through this pandemic, we've made some some difficult business decisions and one of the one of the ones close to my heart was the retirement of the 747s which you know an iconic aircraft that historically uh, did the Orlando route for us um, we're now uh, we've now switched that to uh, a mixture of A350s or 787s we're still to confirm the exact ones but the big difference there is it's got a much bigger uh, upper class cabin so historically 14 upper class seats on a 747 We've now got an upper class cabin of nearly 40 seats on some of those aircraft types. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing, um, and I really believe, there'll be great value uh, going transatlantic to places like Orlando in upper class and where historically we've been quite uh, constrained from a capacity perspective. We are seeing more people looking at booking up into upper class, which is a, a great trend. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Kerry, what, what can you tell us about your pipeline for Florida? You know, when, when are customers booking for? 
So a really similar story to what, what Lee just mentioned, really, that we've seen a, a great success rate with um, packages that have unfortunately been a, unable to travel this year, simply shifting that, that date and, and rebooking for a similar time next year, which, which is fantastic. Um, and alongside the rebooks, we are seeing a really healthy pipeline of, of Florida in terms of new bookings as well. It, it is, you know, one of our top selling destinations um, and continues to, to fare quite well in terms of trading um, from a destination point of view. But certainly school holidays definitely seem to, to be the most popular time so Easter 2021 summer holiday 2021 and um, but Lee mentioned 2022 and we do have product on sale throughout 2022 and we are seeing demand even further afield into um, the earlier half of 2022 in there as well which is great so there definitely is still demand there mm -hmm. Um, and in terms of trends, we've seen some really interesting trends, really, when it comes to, to Florida and rebook. So the first one is a longer average length of stay. So people are rebooking the holiday, but choosing to stay a little bit longer, which is great. Um, and I think it might be due to people feeling like they've almost missed out on the holiday this year. So they want to make it even more special next year because alongside staying for longer, um, Lee mentioned um, upper class availability, and we have seen some upgrades both in terms of cabin class and uh, room type and, and hotels as well, where people mm -hmm. are almost willing to go a little bit extra to make sure that next year's holiday is even more special than the one that we're going to have this year. Yeah, which is a fantastic set. So mm -hmm. are we saying they're going kind of from one week to 10 days or is it more like 10 days to two weeks? You're seeing 10, 10 days to two weeks, really, is, is a more popular average length of stay than the, than the typical seven days at the moment. So, yeah, it's, it's great to see that the appetite and demand is definitely still there. Mm, especially if they're flying on upper class to get there. It's brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and how is Florida performing compared with other U.S. states, uh, you know, and, and to other destinations in general? Yeah, I, th I think, as I said, Florida is, is, is by far one of our top selling destinations and, and, and vies for that top spot um, most, most months and, and years, really. And I think Florida is especially Orlando, it offers such a unique holiday that can't really be be transferred to another state or another destination, really. It, it does have such um, a, a unique nature to, to families, especially, and, and, and the theme parks and the ability to twin centre that Orlando experience then with a the beach experience as well. So I think it will always hold something really dear for customers. And I think that's one of the reasons that it does continue to, to fare really well in terms of our in terms of our um, monthly trading and, and is, in, is in pole position uh, most months to be honest. Brilliant. And, and while we're waiting for the border to be reopened, mm -hmm. how are you currently handling cancellations, you know, departures up until certain dates? Yeah, so we're still um, where borders are closed and people can't travel. We're still cancelling on a 14 day rolling basis. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's been in, in place for some time. And, and we just, you know, continually monitor what's happening because, um, you know, the US borders are still closed. But we've seen other countries where it kind of flip flops and it opens one minute and closes the next. So we're just we're, we're really close to any developments um, that there are. But yeah, as it stands on a 14 day rolling basis, we're cancelling. And, you know, for us, it's, it's all about working with our agent partners and offering as much flexibility as, as we possibly can do. So where a package can't travel, you know, we make sure that we've got a range of options to help the agent and their customer to try and get the best outcome, whether that be rebooking for a different date, taking a refund credit note so they've got a bit more time to think about what they want to do their holiday or opting for a refund as well. And as I said before, the, the level of rebooks that we've seen for Florida has been really, really impressive. So people don't want to lose out on that experience and they're simply just deferring it to a different date, which is great. Yeah. Uh, Annabelle, how much of do something different.com's business would Florida products normally make up? You know, how is your Florida product fair? Talk to us about that side of things. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. Thank you. And thanks for having me here today. The sun's come out for the first time this afternoon, about eight days. So that's nice to be talking about Florida. So, um, yes, Florida bookings um, make up about a third of our ticket sales. Um, and um, it's doing surprisingly well. That's it's also about average um, for for this year so far. Mm -hmm. So that is um, very encouraging, especially as UK and European um, holidays are in such demand. We've seen, you know, Jet2 respond to that with thirteen thousand extra seats to some key European routes. Um, so and our sales reflect that. So that our European is sort of thirty three percent up. Uh, Florida is about twenty percent down for Florida uh, bookings, but. When it comes to booking attraction tickets, that can often be um, an afterthought um, when it comes to booking the holidays. So the tickets can often be added on um, after that. So um, I am confident we'll see a boost in ticket sales just as soon as those borders open and uh, the flights are running. Um, and we need the, the, you know, the customers to have their confidence 
um, to commit. But um, um, but yeah, Florida is um, an important part of our business, and for us, it's important to make it as easy as possible for agents to to add those tickets on at the point of sale. So that's really one of the key mm-hmm. messages we always try to to promote. You know, to get the tickets added on at the time that you're booking flights and hotel. Mm-hmm. You know, the ticket prices only ever go up. They only ever go up in one direction. Um, and of course, booking them now, you're securing them at today's rates. Um, and we're we're offering, you know, free cancellation and always have done. So that's nothing new, really. But it really does, for Florida in particular, help travel agents to build those tickets into the holiday at the point of sale, which is crucial. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can say, add the tickets on today. If anything happens next year and, you know, the worst happens, you can cancel those tickets free of charge. So, um, um, so yeah, but we're, we need those flights and then we can hopefully get some more bookings. <laughs> <laughs> and are you seeing similar trends, you know, Easter and, and summer are, are still big for you guys in terms of, you know, tickets being booked for then? Oh, Annabelle, sorry, I think, oh, I, just, I think, we, I think you've been mute. Are you back again? Can you hear me? I'm back, I'm back. Ah. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. You're back. Okay, great. I was just saying, have you seen similar trends uh, for Easter and, and summer 2021 in terms of tickets being booked for then, particularly, you know, these, these periods are particularly busy for you and going into 2022? Yes, definitely. We've, um, a lot of the bookings have rebooked for 2021. Um, uh, for Disney, <coughs> um, we're waiting for new ticket packages actually for Q4 of next year. Yeah. Uh, and I know that there's a whole um, queue of people waiting for those ticket packages, packages to be released to, you know, to get their October half term and Christmas bookings in. Um, but um, uh, yes, you know, very similar trends. Summer, you know, Easter, um, the bookings are, you know, very strong for those key travel periods. Yeah. And, and just to remember, I think you mentioned there they can cancel free of charge. Is that right? What is your cancellation your, and your refund policy? Yes, yeah, so we don't charge any admin fees. <clears throat> so everyone's been able to rebook everything free of charge for Florida. Um, and we don't charge cancellation fees for the majority of our products worldwide, um, particularly important for Florida when they are such a high uh, value to the booking. Um, so that really has given a lot of um, confidence and um, power for the agent to, to get those holidays rebooked easily, rebooked quickly. Um, you know, our teams remained on hand throughout the COVID um, uh, crisis for them to be able to talk to. Um, I think our average wait time was about two minutes. So, you know. Brilliant. Oh, no, I think we've lost Annabelle. Oh, just no. Just that crucial moment. Oh, just, I tell you what, Annabelle, you... You refresh, if you wouldn't mind yeah. refreshing your screen, well, I'll ask a question uh, of Lee and Kerry, if that's all right. Um, but to, to Annabelle's point, she was saying that, you know, that the kind of real focus is to encourage people to book earlier than later, especially with the tickets, because you have to, to make sure you don't miss those tickets. But do you anticipate in general that families are going to leave it later to, to book uh, than normal? Are you getting a sense of that? Or, or are they still kind of booking with the same kind of lead in times? And I guess it's slightly different because some people are obviously rolling on holidays that they would have done. But for those new bookings, are you seeing any any kind of trends with that, Lee? Yeah, I think the the, the trends are they're, they're difficult to spot um, fully because, as you say, you've got um, cancellations that are turning into rebooks where people are deferring um, yeah. deferring uh, holidays forward. Um, I, I, you know, that there hasn't been a crisis of of this level previously, but when we've seen previous economic slowdowns or uh, terrible things like terrorism um, where the market has been shifted or stunned if you like into into a different booking curve we historically what we tend to see is that we will see actually people want to book those key dates still confirm them those those Florida uh, customers that are avid Florida customers or people that are new to Florida they actually want to book with a traditional tour operator travel agent that will provide that confidence but the number one thing that we're hearing from our our agency partners but also with our own direct customers is this need uh, to provide flexibility they want they want the flexibility that if something does change they can move or 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 transition their book into somewhere else or something else or delay Mm -hmm. it so um from from a trends perspective you know the spikes are the traditional spikes at the moment for us. I think the real test for for us and as an industry is what will January be? You know, what what will that you know, the historic key booking period of January bring, where people tend to book further out? And my hunch is that there will be more tickets 
more room nights and more air seats available for Easter and summer in peak January in that year than probably ever before. So we are going to see, I think, a bit more of a later market for summer 21 booking in January, where historically, certainly for us, people that are booking in January 2021 historically would be booking for 2022 further out because a lot of those peak dates have gone. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what January plays. But there's, you know, there's there's definitely there's still market to be had there. But it depends Mm. on what that sentiment looks like, I guess, when we get into that peak selling period. Yeah, and if there's suddenly a mad rush in January, then that's what we're going to go. Well, let's for, hope. Yeah, exactly. That's, what we're, that's what we're all hoping for. It's touching words. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Kerry, same to you. Are you seeing that? Do you have visitors similar trends with that? We're still seeing quite a long lead time, to be honest. And, and I think, um, you know, Lee mentioned that Florida is one of those destinations that people are, are so keen to get it to get it booked and to, to know that they're going and um, I think what I'd say is that there may be an appetite to wait a bit longer and to, to get sort of a last minute deal and um, because people are unsure about what's going to happen and, and and you can totally understand that especially you know borders are closed and what's the experience going to be like but I think that's almost a reason to think about securing as early as you would normally have done because I think with hotel capacity and um, going to be less than it normally would be because of social distancing measures and even in the theme parks as well uh, restrictions on how many people can be in a park on any one day mm-hmm. i think it's another reason for people to kind of book it as early as they, they normally would do and make sure they've got those reservations in hand and they know they can go and they can get the experience that they want because again you know you touch wood and, and we can be as optimistic as we like and think that you know hopefully by summer of next year there won't be those social distancing restrictions in place but the answer is that we, we just don't know and i think it's important for people to to ensure that they can maximize their time in florida and, and their holiday experience um, as much as possible as early as possible um kerry while i've got you i should just say we've had a, a lovely comment come through from andrew mcphillip saying can i just say that Goldmill have been amazing with their flexibility for cancellations and rebookings Aww. bookings for me that is so nice. Thank you so much, Andrew. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate your support. <laughs> and about to, to Kerry's point about theme parks, you know, that, that we may well see and, and maybe if we get a vaccine and touch of wood we do, uh, you know, this this the whole world might revert back to normal, but we may well see that, that kind of limited capacity in theme parks. So presumably your messaging to your <laughs> book your tickets at the point of, of booking your overall holiday is going to become more important than ever. Uh, and, and presumably, you know, you're trying to get that message out there, I'm assuming. Yes, absolutely. I mean, attractions um, worldwide are, in fact, introducing new park pass reservation systems to manage capacity and maintain social dis- distancing. Um, and customers will, um, yeah, they're getting used to that. You know, it's becoming the norm to pre-book a visit from anything to your local zoo, to your local pub. So yeah. it, it, <laughs> it oh, will become no. more of a habit, a habitual thing to pre-book attractions which is great for us. Um, Disney, of course, in Florida were the first, one of the first to introduce a, a park reservation system. So customers now, um, not only do they need their uh, ticket, a valid theme park ticket, they need a reservation day uh, to gain access for every day they plan to visit the park. So they need to say on which day they wish to go to Animal Kingdom, on which day they wish to go to Magic uh, Magic Kingdom, etc. So right. pre-booking and planning ahead will become very important. Um, that said, though, I think, you know, there will be a shift in, in late bookings um, because customers do need to have the certainty that they can travel. So that sort of could counteract that that trend. But mm-hmm. um, um, I think the, the Brits have shown time and time again that they're resilient um, and uh, they don't need a huge amount of confidence to commit to future holidays. So I'm sure that um, we'll, we'll you know, see the bookings come um, yeah. for the future. And I guess everybody's having to get used to planning in their own lives. Like you say, booking to go to the pub, for instance, you know, so it's just becoming (laughs) of our own lives. Holidays won't feel anything different uh, with regards to that. Um, Lee, just moving on to to focusing on the aviation side, just looking at seasonal departures from Belfast and Glasgow to Orlando in summer 2021. um, Are they still planned? Um, And how far out can clients currently book with Virgin Atlantic? So um, we do plan to operate... um, Orlando, Belfast, and um, uh, and Glasgow. So um, we'll operate those in uh, summer 2021. Um, where we are at the moment is um, our exact schedule is to be finalised. Um, we'd like to be in a in a position as we head into the um, end of this year when we when we start to get uh, Orlando back on sale for um, 
London as well. I uh, would like to be in a position that you can start to book that. At the moment, you can book you know, your normal 360 odd days out. Um, and we are looking at, uh, is there opportunities for us um, in certainly the trade to be able to provide um, longer, further out booking, given that we're seeing that as a, as a constant trend. So uh, okay. I don't have any news on that today, but that is something that myself and, and Nikki Goldsmith in my team who heads up leisure sales that we're actively looking at how how potentially could we could we fulfill that uh, how could we play to that that demand and opportunity that's there oh brilliant so we, we may have news of that ahead of January for instance when we're hoping that will be the big, big... We, we are hoping yeah as we yeah. as we restart and ramp the business back up you know we had a period of time where we had no passenger flying and I think if you look at where we are with the passenger flying that we have today um, we've we've ramped up and turned a lot of our, our network back on and we want to be able to do that as we head into december as we ramp up further and as the whole industry um, we all hope starts to restart we'll have some positive news as we as we go into that uh, what is that january booking period to ensure that you know all of our partners are are in the best po possible position to be able to serve the demand that i know that their customers have yeah okay so watch this space on that yes uh Lee, I'll just stick with you because we've got a question here from Julie Hendrickson. I'm not sure if you're able to help with, but she says, I know Esther's were cancelled to stop us travelling. Will they just unfreeze or will guests have to reapply for a new one? Um, I, don't know the exact, I don't know the exact answer to that. No. Um, okay. they, they've been, uh, they, I know they were frozen but on the basis that they obviously closed the borders completely. Yeah. Um, I'm of the understanding, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go solely on me, that um, they will be They'll still have the same time time lag, if you like, but they'll just open them back up when the borders open back up. That's mm -hmm. obviously their visa entry program, but they've closed their borders to everyone apart from US citizens. So my understanding is that they'll just open that process back up uh, when the borders open back up. Okay. Um, but feel free to send me a send me an email, and I will um, I will get our government affairs team and, and team to to look into it and come back with a response. Brilliant. There you are, Julie. <laughs> A question really for all of you. I mean, all of you have said how uh, pivotal Florida is for your business and just how huge it is in terms of the numbers of, of, of clients that you send there. So how well do you think Florida is positioned to bounce back, perhaps compared to other US states or other destinations that you sell? Um, Kerry, I'll, I'll come to you first and, and then Annabelle and then Lee. Yeah, I think I mentioned before that I think Florida is such a, a unique destination that you can't necessarily take that, that especially the orlando experience with all the theme parks and everything that goes on with it and think oh well actually i'm just going to go to x somewhere else i think yeah. i think that gives it the the, the strongest position it, it, it can have in terms of bouncing back because as i said there is still demand there um, and it's not it's not the type of holiday experience you can you can get elsewhere it is it's such a magical place really isn't it so um so yeah i i, th I think it is very well placed um to bounce back compared to other destinations Brilliant. And Annabelle, I know you said that, that Europe's kind of been doing well, but do you see Florida as kind of being key as ever as, as ever it was uh, for, for do something different going forwards? Definitely, yes. I mean, Florida has a very loyal, dedicated following and fan base. And, you know, there are people, you know, it used to, they say it's a once in a lifetime holiday, but I know people that have been 24 times. You know? <laughs> um, so it's, it's definitely going to bounce back. Um, people need their theme park fix and Florida is the place to go to get that. Um, in terms of other destinations, I mean, now at the moment, um, Europe um, is, is seeing a huge spike. Iceland, uh, and I think people are sort of traveling to destinations they sort of deem as safe. Um, Iceland and Poland are our two top selling destinations, or Poland was until last week, of course, and now it's been removed from uh, the green list. So we've seen an avalanche in cancellations. But, um, but there, um, uh, and also UK. Um, you know, I was in the Cotswolds just last week, and I think every other man and his dog was also in the Cotswolds last week. So, uh, you know, the UK is seeing a huge um, stay, you know, drive-in staycations, and we've responded to that as well. We've increased our product range with um, version experience days. They offer customers nine-month validity, free extensions. There's, they're not date-specific. And with Christmas, dare I say, around the corner, they make great gift experiences or just because somebody's had a particularly everyone's had a tough year they're great ways to um you know make someone's 2020 a little bit better mm -hmm. but there's lots of things like that that we're seeing you know make up some of the shortfall um currently um you know disneyland california their parks remain closed uh there's no exact time frame as to when they'll open so i'm sure they will take a little longer to recover mm -hmm. um we did see a spike in disneyland paris sales for the summer but then quarantine put a bit of a stop to that um, but for Florida, as I've said, you know, 
they have a huge loyal base, um, a huge amount of repeat business. You've only got to look at the forums such as the DIB um, to see that people are desperate to get back out there. Um, I think we'll probably find that first timers and young families will take longer to, as a market to, to get back out there because it is such an important big holiday for them. Mm. Um, equally, the multi-generational sector, for obvious reasons, will take longer to recover, um, to, to come back to Florida. But um, that core fan base, you know, the core family market will remain and stay strong as soon as they can. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. And then Lee, would you agree with that? Do you think that, that uh, repeat bookers are likely to kind of dominate uh, ticket sales initially? Uh, and then I guess families as well, but families will be repeat bookers who've had such a fantastic time at all the theme parks, et cetera, before. Are you feeling similar to that, Lee? I think, I think look, when, when, I, when I think of Florida and I look at the demographic that travels to, to Florida with us, you know, it's, it's a big state. And I think uh, absolutely the theme parks, there's nowhere better to do theme parks in, in the world. Uh, and they do, they do customer service, they'll do safety, security better than, better than anyone. Uh, and I think you'll absolutely see that um, bounce back. And I think we'll see that market come back. I also think um, families, um, depending on the age of their children, it's, you know, if you've had a, a year or a two year delay to that, um, there's a finite opportunity where you could capture all of the family's interest in a certain theme park. Mm. Um, so I, I absolutely think the, the, the theme park business will bounce back and it's well positioned to bounce back. I then look at the wider Florida landscape. I think um, there's a real opportunity to promote beaches. Absolutely. We're seeing trends of where people want to have that seclusion and maybe that twin center historically that didn't get promoted as much, that twin center of you know going out to one of the beaches as, for a week as well as a few days in the theme park because it's capacity restraint that, that there's opportunities now i think for for partners to look at um florida in totality so beaches city breaks down to to miami i think they'll be a little bit longer to recover i think we're, we're generally seeing that in the city break bit and then obviously the big challenge which um we know as an industry that we you know there's, there's still some challenges for it to come back is you know the cruise market out of miami and that cruise and stay um proposition from a from a from a florida perspective is certainly very strong for us so um it, it, there's a multitude of different elements there but it, it, and I, I think different parts of it will bounce back at, at different speeds but um yeah they're they're definitely well positioned and for us it's been a what we call a fortress destination for many years and, and we absolutely believe it will continue to be one Brilliant. Uh, a question really looking at the marketing um, side of things and, and Kerry, I'll, I'll start with you, but to what extent are you really proactively promoting um, Florida and the USA at the moment? What kind of season are you focusing on? What messaging are you deploying? Talk to us about that so the agents can kind of capitalize on that message. Mm -hmm. So I guess overall, our marketing activity to agents at the moment is, is less than it normally would be because we appreciate they have other operational um, kind of priorities at the moment, but we are still actively marketing. And with Florida being one of our top selling destinations, it gets a fair share of voice within all of our marketing activities. So we absolutely are still promoting the destination. Um, as Lee said, we've, we've introduced a number of twin center options as well for exactly the reasons that we, we were talking about and the opportunities that are there for that kind of market. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the, the messaging changes. So the destination itself will always be, um, a, you know, a key destination for us. But yeah, the messaging does change. So in terms of departure periods, we're not promoting anything um, departing before April 2021. So they are, you know, forward uh, booking holidays that we're promoting. And I guess, you know, in an, any normal time, you're selling the, the dreams and the, the the lovely parts of a holiday. But I think, um, you know, customers and, and agents are, are less concerned with potentially, you know, how many restaurants or swimming pools a hotel has. And they're more interested now in about, about the safety measures that have been, been put in place. So, so we're actively including information like that within our marketing to help um, agents and their customers understand from airlines to hotels to theme parks what, what they can expect and what safety measures are going to be in place to help them feel confident, uh, confident enough to travel and um, so so yeah as I said it, it definitely does get its, its share of voice and, and it's it's one of the destinations that we'll put offers on on social media and it by far and large it gets the, the most engagement the most shares mm -hmm. the most comments and things like that so as I've said before you know demand definitely is still there for the destination. Brilliant and Annabelle same question to you what kind of messaging key messaging are you focusing on on the marketing side would do something different? Um, well, for Florida, we're very much um, sort of reactive to what the parks are doing. Um, and um, 
uh, Universal Orlando, they've um, and Disney well, are starting to release some offers that will stimulate, stimulate some sales, which will be good. Uh, Universal also just announced um, a new species of roller coaster next year called the uh, Jurassic World Velocicoaster. So anything exciting like that, we tend to jump on the back of. <laughs> uh, do look on our Facebook page for a, a, a YouTube clip. <laughs> it looks terrifying but I can't wait to go on it. So, um, so lots of that sort of fun, exciting thrills uh, is sort of in our messaging. But um, essentially our message to the trade uh, remains the same. Um, and it's really the fabric and the DNA of what DSD and you know, Do Something Different is, is all about, which is, you know, we make selling tickets easy and fun. Easy because of our flexible trading terms um, and the booking website and fun because, you know, we are talking about holiday, you know, creating holiday memories, you know, from Florida worldwide, you know, the best theme parks in the world to an albatross encounter in New Zealand or, you know, mm -hmm. the Northern Lights in um, Iceland, you know, that it is all the fun stuff. Um, and um, a lot of what we do um, as a ticket operator is to make the, the tickets um, gate ready. So we do um, issue real gate ready tickets for all the theme parks. Um, and um, that that assures that customers can get straight through, you know, the, the turnstile. Um, they don't have to queue or to take a passport to exchange their tickets at mm. uh, guest services. Um, and um, we've also got some great sales tools that you can download from our website. And that, that's constantly um, being added to. So there's some new fantastic stock images from Disney, Universal, um, that now the retail shops are open. They can download, print, hang in their window. Uh, there are lots of top ticket sheets that help direct customers to, you know, the best things to see and do to make sure they're not missing out. Um, and constantly thinking of things like this to help um, our trade partners to build attractions into the conversation, to build, you know, these um, holiday memories into their uh, booking. Um, so so that's just still very much at the core and still a focus for us. Um, and then... Um, uh, and yeah, and then maybe some cash incentives if we <laughs> if we can will be uh, something that we would like would normally do in January, but who knows? <laughs> oh, here's crossing fingers again <laughs> for January. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and 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 Lee, um, I mean, Kerry mentioned you know the, the kind of health and safety side of things that customers want to know about this. Presumably, that's a part of your marketing as well in terms of reassuring people that it's safe to fly. You can feel reassured with everything. You know, I imagine Atlantic obviously hosted uh, Trade Press. I know a couple of weeks ago we had some of the teams just to see that and feel reassured about about the flying experience is that a big part of your marketing at the moment yeah so uh, a lot of our our focus um, in general is messaging around flexibility health and safety uh, and, and booking with confidence so um, our, our fly well fly self program highlighting what we do on board how it is slightly different what does our check-in um, look like what is our boarding process look like um, and that's one of the things I'd really call on our partners to make sure that they they do take the time for customers that are either booking or going to book and they're really clear on what that what that customer journey looks like because it is different not just for us but for when you arrive in resorts or hotels it's different you know we board slightly differently where we we board from the back where you used to board upper class for, first from the front and um, there's some there's some differences there there's also some rumors you know we had some rumors that we don't serve alcohol on board, which is absolutely rubbish. We do serve alcohol on board. Um, we had some rumors that we don't have any hot meals. We do have hot meals. So our service is still what you'd expect it to be, um, but we'd really encourage everyone to look at, um, you know, if it's our um, COVID insurance that we provide to customers or if it's our, um, our flexibility, but then also um, the onboard health and safety and ensure that we're focusing on that. But then what I would say is, as an airline, we're just part of the journey and we're very aware of that. And I think as an industry, we have to come together to make sure that customers are aware of what does the airport experience look like? What does the aircraft experience look like? Then the transfer, then the um, in resort. And if that is a, a theme park or in the, the hotel that you're staying in. And that's where really, I really believe that tour operators and, and travel agents will become more important than ever before as we restart, because they're the ones that will have all that information and if they educate themselves on what's actually happening at each of these different operators it really can be their point of difference as the market um, recovers to give customers confidence to travel and we're hearing a lot of that aren't we that, that people are coming back to travel agents because they want to have that knowledge and advice and absolutely so capitalize on it yeah exactly that 
Um, Kerry, I can see your time ticking away and I think it'd be remiss, remiss of me not to discuss pricing because I think that's what a lot of people watching will, will be wanting to, to hear about. So what are you seeing from Florida Partners in terms of pricing for next year? You know, are hoteliers or airlines uh, helping you offer a particularly great mm -hmm. view at the moment? Yeah, I have to say, you know, suppliers have, have, have been amazing um, throughout this and we've had great communication with all of our, our key suppliers. And in terms of rolling over contracts, extending offers, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, we've, we've seen some really, really good offers in the market. So I think there will be an element that is um, that is price led and people will be tempted to drop prices to encourage um, more bookings. But really, I think the other angle to that is, is more of a, a value message because people people accept that a trip to Florida is probably not going to be cheap, especially if they want to go for longer and they want to visit all the parks and they potentially then want to go out to the beaches. So I think it's about adding value where we possibly can. So whether that's free nights or free upgrades um, in terms of a room or whatever it might be, um, I think that's probably the more important message. And as I said earlier, you know, what we see in terms of engagement from the offers we put out, it, it is where you can demonstrate value rather than a lowest leading price uh, value, a value driven message. We'll, we'll always get more engagement um, and, and agents will, yeah, will pick up and share things like that more. So, so yes, suppliers ha ha have been, have been really good and, and we've had um regular open communication with all of our key partners on the ground in florida and that as lisa thought that is such a massive help to us because the more we can take and absorb that information and pass that on to our agent partners who in turn passes that on to their customers we've all got to work together in this to, to make sure that we're you know presenting a fair and accurate picture and giving customers the, the confidence uh, to, to want to travel again that's the most important thing really so uh so yeah it's been, been fantastic and that's the issue that the whole industry has to work mm -hmm. in, you know, yeah. to get that confidence back. Yeah. And, and Kerry, just staying with you, are you expanding or changing your Florida product at all for 2021? Are you kind of seeing particular trends towards things like self-catering, for instance? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. And that's one of the biggest areas that I think will be, uh, we already have started to expand and, and will continue to do so in 2021. So um, early on, really, I guess, in the rebooking process, we did see uh, more and more demand for, for Villa product. Um, and I think, you know, it's for the obvious reasons. People feel that they can um, they can be a bit more isolated in their, their own villa. Mm -hmm. um, so we've added more Villa product into our portfolio, not only for Orlando, but for some of the, the other regions within Florida um, as well, some of the beach regions, which has been selling really well and um, working with a few new suppliers so yes yeah, so I, th I think as I said we've already we've already added to the portfolio and we will continue to do so as, as we see that demand um, increase more and more mm -hmm. and yeah twin centers will probably be the other area that, that I'd probably uh, say we'll focus more on and um, as we're seeing people stay for longer um, average durations making the most and seeing as, as much of the state you know Lee mentioned before it is a really big state and it's got so much to offer so being able to tailor make um, packages um, that are ready made for agents to, to present to their customers in terms of making the best of Florida and taking in all the key and um, the key elements of the state that's something that we'll be focusing on more and more of uh, in the future as well. Okay, that ties into my final question, which is what do you think the, the biggest opportunities for Florida are in 2021. So villas and, and twin centres would be your, your two big... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it would be. Okay, and Annabelle, what about you? What do you see the biggest opportunities for, for Florida business uh, for do something different for 2021 and beyond? Um, well, really, I mean, for, for Florida, it's, it's uh, I think as people have said, it's the, the unique offering they have. It's, it's For me, it's very much centered around those theme parks. They're constantly reinventing themselves. Every year there's a new reason to go. Um, but and, and it's unmatched anywhere else in the world. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're always going to be in such demand. And then you couple that in with, you know, the fantastic weather, the shopping, the discounts, you know, the coupons, you know, uh, the beaches that are within an hour's drive. Um, and that's uh, all the ingredients that you need for, you know, a fantastic holiday. So it's, um, uh, yeah, the new, new, uh, the new Jurassic ride could be uh, <laughs> one of Jurassic. the big opportunities. Yes, Velocicoaster. Velocicoaster. When does that open? Uh, that's opening um, summer next year. I'll have to. You'll have okay. to see my Facebook, <laughs> TSD Facebook page. Uh, there's a video <laughs> clip. <laughs> there's a nice hook for agents to to kind of push. You know, the Jurassic Park ride. Absolutely. Fantastic. And, and Lee, final question to you, where do you see the biggest opportunities for Florida business for 2021 and beyond? Is it is it the twin centres, um, like Kerry was saying? I know you were saying it's a kind of like 
looking elsewhere, you know, not just at the theme parks, but elsewhere at what the state has to, the Sunshine State has to offer? Yeah, I mean, from from my perspective, uh, I'd agree with the group. I think, you know, the the, the heartland of of um, of Florida is, you know, from certainly from from a UK perspective, is Orlando. And I think if that park experience is going to be slightly different for a period of time, it's ensuring that customers are, are clear on that. And and maybe it is that they, uh, you know, spend slightly less time at the park or slightly more time at the park. I don't know, but I think. For me, it's it's the opportunity to really focus on on twin centers. The fact that they can, you know, be removed from the crowds for a for a period of time, if that's either a, a beach or a villa, um, and then they can go into the park knowing that actually they're working with the best in the business when it comes to theme parks, health health and safety, security, and so forth. So I think, you know, it's 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 our job as an industry to sell that to the UK public to understand that actually they can go there. Uh, and get the best of both worlds. And given that, you know, we've already hit, heard today that, that people are trading up and if they are traveling, they're looking to go in for a longer duration. It's an, it's an absolute opportunity that we should, we should all try and capitalize on. And, and just finally, how important do you think the price value message will be in, in kind of driving this market? You know, like you said, it is a unique destination. There's nowhere else like it. There's nowhere else you can get kind of all of that on tap. Do you think price will be more important than ever? Or to Kerry's point, I guess people are kind of, because they didn't have their holiday this year, they actually want to spend a bit more next year. Final thoughts on that, Lee? So from, from my perspective, I think you're going to get, um, and people will know this for cust- you know, their own customer base or customers that walk in into their shop or come through to them on the telephone, you're going to get, I think, two very clearly distinct customer types, which is you're going to get people that will see this as an opportunity to maybe go to Orlando and capitalise on the fact that as an industry, we've got some capacity that we want to shift. Um, and I would I would I would encourage agents to look at strange departure days if that's departing on a Wednesday or a Tuesday and coming back on a Tuesday or a Wednesday where you'll get a cheaper air, airfare where the aircraft might not be as full um, and get some odd durations and look at how you package that together. And then I think you'll get the customers that, you know what, they want all the bells and whistles. They want to know that they've got the best experience and they're going to capitalize on it. They've deferred that once in a lifetime trip. Or they want to pay for the fact that it's going to be end to end handled by an agent, seamless experience. They know that they're, they're partnering with people that are focused on health and safety and, and they can have you know, all the bells and whistles that Orlando or Florida offers. So I think you're going to have two opportunities there, but it's navigating with that, that customer the best route to take them and realize that there'll be loads of opportunities. If, if I look at some of our loads of what we're flying now as a scheduled operator, you know, we'll be flying seven times a week and uh, there will be lots of opportunities out there outside of those traditional you know friday saturday sunday departures brilliant and and kerry would you agree with that you know price value how important is that message going to be or is it yeah. if people missed out on their holiday they, they just want to get away whatever yeah. <laughs> i think it definitely is and it's like i said before i, th- I think value I take Lee's point. There's two distinct um, customer bases here, but for me, value will always will always win. I think people do want or accept that um, a trip to Florida, they want to make it. They're not going to go and just say, "Oh, well, I'll go to one park for one day and that'll be it." They, they do want to experience as much as they possibly can when they're there. So, so value messages will absolutely be important, and that's the conversations that we're having with all of our suppliers um, on the ground in Florida. About what can we do to um, to in, in, instill customer confidence? make sure that they understand what experience they're going to have um, and, and basically give them that confidence to travel again. So, so yeah, where, where we can is value, value, value for us. Brilliant. Thank you so much to, to all three of you. I can see time sticking away. And Annabelle, any final points to say on that, on, on price versus value? Um, Oh, I just uh, yeah, echo really Lee and Kerry's comments. I mean, um, you know, the theme parks in Orlando, they have they represent huge value. Nowhere can you have such dining entertainment, um, you know, experiences in one sort of ticket. So so, yeah, it's all about the value for money. And um, uh, but yeah, absolutely. But no, thank you very much for having me on the show. Oh, well, thank, <laughs> yeah, you. thank you very much, Sophie. Thank you to all three of you.